Hey, shalom everyone, this is Chris Shoemaker, also known as Yehuda ben Shemer, and welcome to the Daily Drosh. Today's Daily Drosh is taken from 2 Kings chapter 6, and uh, this, this chapter is about the great famine that overcame Israel as a result of their sin and their disobedience, and this was indeed prophesied by Elisha the prophet, and consequently he got the blame for it. So there's this really sad story where the king was up on the wall, and uh, he was wearing his robe, and this woman cried out to him while he was on the wall. And uh, he says, ma'am, I can't help you. I don't even have food and wine. How can I give you food and wine? You know, the Lord has, has brought this upon us. And he says, what's your problem besides not having food? And she said, she told this really sad story about how um, this other woman suggested they kill her son and cannibalize him, and then the next day they would kill her son and cannibalize him so that they would stay alive. So she willingly gave up her son. They boiled him and ate him. The next day came, and when she asked for the other woman to kill and boil her son, she hid him. And this just struck the, the accord in the king's heart where the, where the king tore his robe in lamenting and in torment and in sorrow. And everybody could see that underneath his robe he wore sackcloth, which was a very coarse and uncomfortable uh, piece of clothing. And it was a clothing that was worn as a sign of repentance and mourning. But this is what the king says in verse, in verse 31. May God kill me if I don't execute Elisha this very day, the king vowed. So Elisha got the blame for the famine that the Lord allowed to come on the children of Israel because of their sin and disobedience uh, and idolatry and everything like that. This is a classic case of crucifying the, uh, the messenger. Uh, Elisha was just the messenger. He's the one who prophesied and told what God was going to do. And he got the blame as if he had any power to create the famine uh, itself. But prophets were very revered because they had such a close connection with God that whatever they said came to pass. Um, so if they declared an end to the famine, then uh, God would honor that and, and the famine would end. But uh, the Lord didn't give permission for that famine to end. And so basically what I want to point out and say in this daily drosh is that when you live a righteous life, when you live in a close personal relationship with God through Messiah Yeshua, and you proclaim his truth, you proclaim his Torah, God may even give you a word of knowledge, he may even give you a prophecy, but when you speak the truth and denounce sin, um, you are going to be seen as a racist, a bigot, intolerant. You're going to be very unpopular because you will not deny nor recant nor renounce or um, sugarcoat or gloss over the truth. Uh, so when you tell it like it is, firmly but in love, not in a accusatory or angry fashion, but when you just simply declare the truth and declare the word of God, you call sin sin and you don't compromise, you're going to be you're going to be seen uh, as 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 a bigot, as a racist, you're going to be uh, 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 unpopular. Um, you know, people are going to blame you and your attitude and your worldview for all that's wrong in the world. Uh, they're going to blame it on you. Yet again, you have nothing to do with it. You're just the messenger. You're just delivering what God had already said thousands of years ago, and it's applicable today. But yet you're going to be the one cr crucified for it and blamed for it because you're speaking the truth and you're not backing down. But just as God protected Elisha and kept Elisha, and uh, he will keep you. He will protect you because you are his ambassador. You are his mouthpiece. Uh, you are his imager and his representative here on earth. So don't be discouraged. Uh, remember what Yeshua said, blessed are those who persecute you for righteousness sake. Say all manner of evil against you fa falsely for great is your reward in heaven. Uh, so if you're being, uh, if you're being, uh, if, if people are coming against you and you're being crucified and vilified, it must mean you're doing something right. So be encouraged. Uh, guys, love you. Thanks so much for listening. Take care and have a great day. Shalom and Shavuot Tov. Thanks for watching. Stay connected by subscribing to our other social media accounts and visiting our website at abrahamsdescendants.com.